what I was told. It's funny that you would sing that song because guy at work is just recently I don't know some he was dude, just recently dude, fired for singing that song the dude that was the drummer in that song is some guy that he's really into and so he was look, look, watching that song and he's like yeah we put on the video and he's like yeah I was just uh, listening to this the other day and etc and yeah and then I had that stupid song in my head the whole day long on Friday when he <laughs> what are words for ah! when no one listens anymore ah! worst marathon ever Hi, everybody. Welcome to another astoundingly awful episode of the worst marathon ever on That Gets My Goat by the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. How many more names can That's I put into too one long. sentence? Let's, let's shorten it, Big Anklevich. I am Big Anklevich. Ah, and I'm Rich Outfield. And I, are we still talking about Comic-Con or do you want to talk about something else? Let's, let's just go ahead and plow our way through it until we're done. Okay. If we if it takes many episodes, that's fine. But let's talk about it all. Okay. So you talked about your first day. You went to Ender's Game panel last time around, and there, there yeah. was some stuff going on there. I mean, the Hollywood aspect has eclipsed the comic book aspect by far. Oh well, yeah, totally. It's it's basically um, the only reason it's a big deal is because of all the movies and the stars that show up. If it was still just a comic con, nobody would care. But now it's a Hollywood... I mean, at least for the most part, they stick to sci-fi, fantasy, horror, and superhero-related materials, be it a television show, a book, a movie, or a comic book. But uh, it's way, way beyond just comic books. And I'm sure, you know, when when we went there in 2006, I want to say it was... We got, like, John Romita to sign our stuff that we had. What did you have him sign? I had him sign a collection that I had that had one of his uh, a Spider-Man collection. Oh, okay. A, a graphic novel. He signed the cover inside of it, so it's, like, somewhere in the middle. I think, is didn't he do the one where the where he quit being Spider-Man and left his hood in the garbage yeah. or whatever? And it's 50, yeah. Yeah, I think I had him sign that cover within the middle of the book because it wasn't on the outside, I don't think. But anyways, yeah, I mean, this that was a big deal-ish. For well, that, for me it was. For that Comic-Con, but I don't think that, you know, people wouldn't even... Well, uh, here's an example. At the Fox panel, Hugh Jackman was there promoting both Wolverine and... Huge What? <laughs> you know, I saw it. It's large, but I wouldn't say huge. It's not a huge Ackman, after all. Um, <laughs> he was there promoting the the two X Men movies that are next, and he said, "You know, hey folks, Len Wein is in the audience right now, the creator of Wolverine. Stand up and you know have a." He says, "I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for this man." And he stood up and everybody clapped, and I was like, "Oh, well, that was nice of him." But this guy that made up Wolverine for, you know, as a Hulk villain, nobody knows who he is or really cares who he is. He was in the audience completely anonymous. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. Nobody's going to ask him for his autograph. Maybe a couple people now that Hugh has pointed him out. But There's very, very few people. In, basically, Stan Lee will get asked on site for his autograph although they might want him to sign as Hugh Hefner or uh, <laughs> something else but he's pretty much the only person and back in 2006 when when we got John Romita to sign stuff we went tried to get to one of the Stan Lee signings and it was friggin impossible we did get into a panel that he was in but that's it and that one was packed even but it wasn't in a smaller room it wasn't in like Hall H or anything like that it was just a it was one of the smallest rooms I've been in for a, a panel, aside from the ones where they're like, here's our toy line from this year. <laughs> yeah, everything else is just in huge rooms. Like, even the TV shows, gigantic rooms. Stan Lee didn't even command that big of a room. So, yeah, it has definitely changed a lot. And, I mean, I guess if you go way back to when it was just a, really just a comic book convention, I'm sure it was completely unrecognizable. We are kind of in a golden age right now of how significant these characters are and how profitable they are for the studios. And because they're profitable, they're important for the studios. And until we see some giant bombs, I think studios are going to continue to pour tons of money into these. And you'll see several 
comic book adaptations every summer. And I know that there are people that are already sick of them and that have been sick of them for years. And that's too bad, but... A lot of those people were the people that didn't like it to begin with, so... That's a good point. So, of course they're sick of them. Just as much as we're sick of Twilight movies, you know? So, yeah, right now the spotlights are all on comic books and and the superheroes and and the franchises that are being made by them. And these things probably happen in waves and maybe a decade from now there'll be one comic book movie made every summer or every other summer or whatever and people won't care anymore. I don't know. I mean, right now they're so big, I can't conceive of them not making Spider-Man movies when I'm an old man. But, like, the Western went away. The musical went away. And those used to be the big franchise not franchise the big genres you know the go-to yeah. things that the studios would make perhaps if you just glut the market enough people get sick of it it, it does seem to be the pattern you know they find something that people respond to and then oh here's more here's more here's more eat 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 ah, until you puke and uh, i'm sure eventually that will probably come along to where yeah you won't see Guardians of the Galaxy movies, you won't see Ant-Man or any of that other kind of stuff. You will see... You'll probably still see Spider-Man, Batman, you know, the top ones, but you probably won't see them as often. Well, if that's the case, then Warner Brothers knows what they're doing because they don't promote any of their characters except for (laughs) Superman and Batman. But right now, Warner Brothers is missing out, frankly. They should have a movie every summer. And a couple in other parts of the year as well. But the superhero movies were the things that I was most looking forward to. I didn't get to go to the Amazing Spider-Man 2 panel, but I kind of didn't care. You know, you and I never really talked about that that Amazing Spider-Man movie. It wasn't terrible at all, but I, I didn't think that it was great. And it happened to come out the same year that Avengers came out, which was great. It came out the same year that Dark Knight Rises came out. And, you know, it's just like, sorry, these outweigh Amazing Spider-Man by a lot. Which is weird because that wasn't the case at one point. I mean, Spider-Man was the guy. He was the one that basically kicked the doors open, you know. X-Men sort of kind of pried at the doors. But when Spider-Man had made all that money, the year that it opened aside a Star Wars movie, and everybody's like, what the crap? Spider-Man made as much or more than Star Wars did? Whoa! And Spider-Man was the man. He was the big superhero for a while. Uh, But yeah, now he's just kind of like old news or something. He's he's also ran anymore. And maybe it's because, oh yeah, let's reboot it and start over. And I don't know what it is about it that makes people not care. Yeah, I think we could do a whole episode about that and... I mean, it was too soon to reboot, but now that it's done, it'll be interesting to see if people anticipate the sequel more because they liked the first one, or if enough people were burnt out, they're just like, no, I don't even care about the second one. I, it, it's hard to say. But yeah, I think we could talk a long time about Jamie Foxx as Electro and <laughs> whether I'm crazy that that looks so insanely stupid that they would have done better to have a yellow and green leotard. But that's a, that's a conversation for another time because I didn't go to that panel. But what I, the panel I did go to was I, I went to the... Wait, the, wait. I want you to talk more about panels you didn't go to, please. <laughs> I went. Sorry, go on. The I panel you did go to, to was? The Fox one, and Fox was presenting Wolver- The Wolverine, which will be out by the time this marathon is going. Uh, and to me, The Wolverine looks super, super disappointing, and I wouldn't even go see it if it weren't for Hugh Jackman. I, I, that guy is great. And I, I remember you saying that you did want to go see it. I would, yeah, I'd like to see it. I don't know. I mean, I, I know you've told me more or less the story behind the comic book that they're adapting this time around. I don't know it, though. I've never read it, and I don't really... But I would like to... I don't know I, that it's going to be that close. You're better off because, yeah, I don't recognize any of the Frank Miller, Chris Claremont series in what this is. And, and then the other one, the one that they dedicated the most time at the panel to was X-Men Days of Future Past, which it comes out next summer. But Brian Singer is back as director and they're, almost everybody else is back. And they were all on this panel. 
there were so many people on this panel that they had to like put extra chairs at the end of the table. They had to get a bigger boat. <laughs> they did, and it was kind of amusing because, see, it's a sequel to X Men First Class, and it's also a sequel to X Men The Last Stand, whatever X Men Three was. So you get all of these characters, or maybe it's a prequel to X Men Three because Xavier's in it, and he died in that movie. And Rogue has her powers. Magneto has his powers. So yeah, they're back uh, to being young people. But they're not young. They're older. And, and see, that's another thing. The, the, with Days of Future Past, they are adapting a book that I love, and I think it's one of the best X Men comics I've ever read. Was this Days of Future Past thing? And I knew that they were going to have to mess with it, you know, to make it fit the timeline, the, the the weird, awkward timeline that they've already come up with. But basically in the comic book, there's a dystopian future where sentinels, these huge mutant hunting robots, have killed almost all of the superheroes, you know, not just the X-Men, but the good guys, in the name of protecting us against, you know, the mutant threat and the few who remain uh, have an idea of sending somebody back into the past before the pivotal event that started us on this timeline happened uh, to prevent that and prevent the sentinels from ever rising and from you know the end coming and it looks like they're doing that um to my surprise they gave wolverine gray hair at his temples which was a thing that they had in the comic book to show that you know it's it's in the future like Kitty Pride was now Kate Pride, and she was a you know a grown woman, and Wolverine had this, this you know gray hair to show you okay this is way off in the future. But they actually did that with Jackman. It, why? Because they've shown that he was born in like the eighteen hundreds, right, and yeah. he doesn't have gray in his hair. They've established he's freaking uh, never dies. Yeah, he's effectively never immortal. Never ages. Immortal was the word I couldn't come across. Um, Crun for some reason. And, yeah, and my guess is the reason is just so visually you know the difference between, let's say, 2020 and Wolverine and 1974 Wolverine, you know, kind of thing. I, I, I don't know. But the, the fact that they had all of these people on the panel was really neat to me. They had, like, the, the first class folks, and then they had the, the Brian Singer X-Men folks. Did they have Storm? Yeah, Halle Berry was there. Halle Berry was there. She's like a huge star. <laughs> Didn't you send me a picture and now her hair looks even worse? Yeah, somehow in F Days of Future Past, they got it even worse than in X-Men 3. And in X-Men 3, they gave her like an old crone's hair, you know. <laughs> this The stuff that they showed looks cool. And uh, there weren't any Sentinels in the footage because they're still shooting. Uh, and Sentinels are CG. But like for the t-shirts and posters that they gave us those have sentinels on them and it's weird because i started to think wow this this looks like it'll be a cool movie whereas i had soured so much on the fox x-men franchise um once i saw the way marvel did it which i was just like oh okay they get it all right they're not ashamed to put captain america in a red white and blue uniform or oh, oh you know it just sort of made me resent the people that did that that, that were afraid to have characters that could fly. That, that Storm can't fly or Magneto can't fly, even though they did fly in X-Men 3, it was just puzzling to me. And, and maybe I've beaten that dead horse a lot. But the stuff that they showed us for this new X-Men, I, I guess, I don't know, do you call it X-Men 6? Do you call it X-Men 7? I don't know. <laughs> it looked so cool to me that I thought, dang, I want to see this movie. And part of it is the caliber of actor that they have there. To see Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen again in those roles was really, really neat. And to see him on the panel goofing around, that was fun. At one point they, during the Q&A, somebody asked what could potentially have been a stupid question, but they asked of everybody, if you could play an X-Men character that you that's not your own, who would you play? And so they all went and, you know, like a bunch of them said Wolverine and somebody said Deadpool and somebody said Storm. And, that, and when they got to Patrick Stewart, he said, I would be one of the female X-Men so that I could finally win an Oscar. <laughs> and I laughed because Jennifer Lawrence has an Oscar and Halle Berry has an Oscar and Anna Paquin has an Oscar. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, 
I, that stuff was fun, and uh, hopefully the movie will be good. I, I don't know. I, I guess if I'm too close to the source material, it runs the risk of disappointing me, of upsetting me. I, a lot of people that don't have a lot invested in Iron Man loved Iron Man 3. A lot of people who don't know Superman from Shinola loved Man of Steel. That was a thinly veiled insult. Not to you. So, so yeah, I don't know. I, you've seen nothing for Days of Future Past, right? Yeah, nothing at all. Except for but that one picture, picture of, the of the bad the... hair that you sent me. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm interested. I, I, I have confessed to you, and I know you think that that's the bad thing about it. That I, part of the thing that one of the things that drew me to the X Men in the first place was the lack of need for costumes and it, it was like every you know they didn't have to be an origin story for every one of them they were just born that way um <laughs> they you know they were could be anybody you know it could just be that your friend in high school or you could be this person with these superhero or superpowers you know they would just go out and do things and they didn't wear have to wear masks or have to any of that which i thought was pretty cool and uh, you know i know wolverine has this yellow spandex that uh, we never get to see and maybe someday that will come about it's interesting because yeah as you were saying that x-men must be like the largest franchise of superheroes there's seven aside from like uh, except for batman i'll bet there's more x-men movies yeah batman's got seven right I don't know. Unless you count the Adam West movie. And I think you have eight. to, yeah. Because he had four before we went to, or five if you count Adam West, so they have eight. And Superman has only had four plus two, so they're at six. Spider-Man but do you call is, Superman uh, and the Mole Man, you know, from the uh, 40s? I, I think you got to count that, right? Or, or do people not count that? Like, do you count Batman Mask of the Phantasm, because that came out theatrically? An anim- I don't think an animated one. I think it has to at least be live action. <laughs> okay. Because otherwise, yeah, there's tons of Superman films and stuff like that. But yeah, that makes it a really big time franchise that you don't think about it that way because they keep splitting it up. But that's kind of the way the X-Men are all along. There's the X-Men, but then Wolverine's had his own book and, uh, you know, they've had different teams of X-Men with their own little books and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, down the line. You know, they just keep cranking out characters in the x-men you just keep going to the well and there's plenty more to pull up and uh that's interesting and yeah I, the x-men are probably my favorite as far as comic book characters go um they're the ones that drew me in and they're the ones that i've kind of always liked the most and been drawn to and I've, I, I've certainly read the most comic books in the x-men series as opposed to anything else um, and have you read Days of Future Past? I haven't read Days of Future Past, though. Yeah, that's one that is, was never, I don't know, either never available or never cheap enough or something like that when I was buying all the, uh, whatever you call it. What do they the call it? Paperbacks. The trade paperbacks. There we go. Thank you. The trade paperbacks. When I was doing that, I was doing a lot of that, and I would read. And I was kind of trying to keep up with the most recent stuff, especially because you kept telling me about it. Oh, yeah, this happened and that happened. Really? Yeah, you tell me. It was me you about, that would tell me you'd about You tell it. me about all the Marvel universe goings on. Oh, okay. Yes. Kept reeling me in more the crossover stuff than anything else, but yeah, I would read it to find out what was going on with all that. But yeah, that and maybe the Avengers, what I've read uh, a lot of. Well, you've probably read more Avengers than I have then. Yeah. I... Anyhow, uh, with this uh, X Men panel. Uh, it, just my respect for Hugh Jackman yes you may comment it was skyrocketed and, and I, I told you this before um, the same day as the X-Men panel they had had the Hunger Games Chasing Fire Ch- is that what it's called? what's the second movie called? Uh, Catching, Catching Fire. Fire Catching Fire panel and they had a bunch of actors and the, the, the director and, and, and people on the panel but when it came time to ask questions, all anybody wanted to do was talk to Jennifer Lawrence. And they'd ask her, I don't want to say inane questions, but like really questions of, of the minutia of like what, what, which dress did you enjoy wearing the most? You know, questions like that. 
And nobody cared about any of the other. They didn't even care about Thor's brother. They just wanted to ask Jennifer Lawrence questions. But then when it came time for the X-Men panel, nobody asked Jennifer Lawrence a damn thing. It was all, I've got a question for Hugh. I've got a question for Hugh Jackman. Mr. Jackman, I've got a question for... And I was just like, wow, she got to see both ends of the spectrum in the same day. Yeah, she's the star and the nobody within hours of each other. You also were telling me that Hugh Jackman... Speaking of being a star and a nobody, got dressed in his Wolverine costume and walked around the floor of Comic Con. At least he claimed he said to that have he done had? this, and He's, nobody recognized him. Yeah, he he brought his costume. He said from the set, and he wore it and walked around. And he said only one person stopped him for a picture, and one person s- gave him a compliment on the costume, but said he was too tall. And we all laughed and thought that was so neat. But I just can't imagine (laughs) if I saw Hugh Jackman, I wouldn't know that, hey, that's Hugh Jackman. I saw a couple of guys in really good Wolverine costumes, but just a glimpse at the shape of their face or whatever, you know, okay, well, that's just a guy. You know, that's just me. Maybe there's so many people in there that nobody could even see his face, but... That yeah, I, it's I, interesting. They're right, though, when they say that he's too tall because Wolverine's supposed to be really short. Really, really short. And I, I think we've talked about that before. If you got somebody who's the proportions of comic book Wolverine, how grotesque looking would this guy yeah, be? Yeah, seriously. Are there people, and surely there are, you know, they're like really short, stout, ridiculously muscular guys. They're but, wrestlers. Wrestlers are generally really, really short. Oh, see that? I didn't know. Yeah, they're, they're, I think it comes from that whole, you know, one day they're trying to gain weight so that they can be in this next weight class, and then the next day they're totally trying to drop weight so they can be in the other weight class, and pretty soon they're so stunted themselves that they're just... That and gymnasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somehow gymnasts really stunt their the growth, too. The gymnast thing is weird. Yeah, they, they, they even delay puberty. Yeah, I've heard ways. I've heard that they'll even, you know, the second they quit gymnast, gymnastics, I almost said gymnastry, <laughs> they suddenly will grow, like, quickly and return to, like, normal human proportions. <laughs> but, <laughs> normal human. It's like the Hulk afterwards. <laughs> Calming down, <laughs> but yeah, maybe maybe wrestlers could be. Uh, although there are tall wrestlers too, so maybe that's not quite true. I remember there's a wrestler in high school with me that we, he was just a short, weird-looking dude. Okay, but, but he was a great wrestler. Oh, the, so. the other thing you're forgetting, though, is how ridiculously hairy Wolverine is. Oh yeah, and to see somebody that hairy in real life would have to be like a turnoff for women. And yet Wolverine, partly probably because there's a musk that his body produces or whatever that makes women dig him and all that. But just, yeah, how unattractive somebody would be that actually looked the way that he's supposed to look. But, oh, I love Hugh Jackman. What a cool guy. And uh, he's so, so humble. And it's weird. But, you know, he he gave this little speech uh, when he was talking about the Wolverine movie about how I was not cast as Wolverine. I didn't have the part. I shouldn't be here today. You know, it's like a series of circumstances of coincidences and that all fell so that I would be here today. And I'm so grateful for this role and I'm not going to give up the role. You know, I, uh, I'm, I'm going to play Wolverine for as long as I possibly can. And that, and every, we just applauded because it's the opposite of these guys who are just like, Oh, you know, I don't want to be that anymore. It's like, now that I'm famous, I, I don't want to be, you know, what I don't want to be typecast there. as, you know, I remember Christopher yeah. Reeve not wanting to be Superman and, you know, some of these Batman or whatever. Yeah, they don't Christopher do Nolan anymore. doesn't want to be Batman and what's his face? Who Christian was Batman Babe. before? Oh, sorry. Yeah, Christian Bale. Uh, what's his face too? Um, Mr. Mom. Michael Keaton. Yeah, Michael Keaton was like, nah, I'm done. I ain't doing it no more. And F you fanboys. And that's too bad, but. I can't figure out why Jackman would be such a nice guy. He, he, he shouldn't. He should be a total douche by now. Yeah. It's funny because I remember one of the things that uh, Patrick Stewart once was saying about just how lucky he was to have been able in his life to play not just one, but two very iconic characters. You know, he got to be both Captain Picard and Professor Xavier 
and just how lucky he is to, to be able to do that. And I guess you could put uh, uh, Magneto in the same thing. Magneto, and Magneto Gandalf, is yeah. also Gandalf. Um, you know, those kind of when you when you get to be that big of a deal, you know, you're really lucky. And so you know, you don't just laugh or, or, or turn your nose up at something like that, like Halle Berry has done with Storm. And I guess now her career has kind of taken a downturn because she hasn't done anything of, of note in a long time, really, that maybe she's like, oh, yeah, no, no, Storm is good. I'll be Storm again. Yeah, that's, I know. That's a job. I, I don't know what happened with Halle Berry. I, I, she had somebody that was advising her that told her the opposite of what they should have said. Usually the mentality, and we talk about it, is we're going to do a movie that appeals to me, and then we're going to do something commercial that will keep my career, keep me in money, and that, and 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 she seems to have been unwilling to do I, the commercial. She ones. could have done, you know, a, a flick where she was a, a master spy or something like that, or you know, stuff, uh, fun action movie kind of things. And yet she, I don't know what happened to Ali Berry. Yeah, she just kind of disappeared. She became like a really big deal. She did X Men, X Men Two, won an Oscar, and all of a sudden it was just like I and, she, and I, I would say she even got a reputation of being like I'm better than you, mm -hmm. I'm I'm an Oscar winner and et cetera, and yeah, and and maybe she tried to. I mean, everybody was just like, oh, Halle Berry is so gorgeous, and she had that every guy in the world wanted her kind of a thing going on at a, one point as well it seems like maybe she tried to buck against that as well like hey you're not going to know me for my looks you're going to know me for my great acting chops and now we don't know about her at all because yeah she she's gone away i'm not sure what the deal is behind that and maybe she can still have a renaissance because that happens plenty for all sorts of actresses i mean you look at uh Sandra Bullock, you know, she went away and came back. And uh, Jennifer Lopez is not an actress, but she was, you know, one of those people in the late 90s that everyone was like, oh, she's so gorgeous. And then she went away for a long time, and now she's kind of suddenly back. So, I don't know. I forgot what got us on this point, but... Uh, no, just the people on the panel. Oh, I was talking about how what a nice guy Hugh Jackman is, and, and that he should have a head as huge as his Ackman. <laughs> um, and, and yet he doesn't. He just seems like a really decent, level-headed guy. And, and so I, you know, I hope that he continues to play Wolverine for as long as it's still fun for him. And then one more movie after that. <laughs> At least his name isn't Hugh Jass. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah... I, I love Hugh Jackman too he's just such an awesome dude and he does such a great job as Wolverine I wish they need to cast him as like Han Solo in the new Star Wars or something I don't know who they've I'm, I'm sure they probably cast somebody already but some kind of a, a, a awesome role like that he, he needs to have a second role so that he can be like Patrick Stewart although maybe he just needs to wait maybe it'll come down the line he'll be somebody iconic in the future I, I, they were talking t about casting him as Bond when Craig was done, or maybe when Bar Brosnan was done. They were saying, oh, what about Hugh Jackman? I think he would have been fantastic. He'll probably be too old, uh, considering Daniel Craig was young yeah. when they started it, and he's got at least two more movies to go. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know. But th there, Yeah, there's got to be parts out there for him. But right now, Wolverine is in the best possible hands, actor-wise. And, and that's neat. I, we'll, we'll go see that movie sometime, and we'll talk about how that, that movie was. And then I guess we'll go see X-Men First Class, or First Class 2, whatever they're calling it. <laughs> I think they're just calling it X-Men colon Days of Future Past. And yeah, there'll be confusion when people are trying to do the timeline and figure out where it fits. But uh, let's stop talking. I, I feel like... I said a lot okay so we'll finish the x-men episode and move on to another episode yes. here in a bit okay. um thanks for listening everybody to another worst marathon ever on the dune steep audio fiction magazines that gets my goat don't do that <laughs> we'll yeah. see you later that gets my goat is produced under a creative commons 3.0 license that'll teach you Uh. Okay.
Okay. We are recording. <laughs> yeah? 